This lecture will explore how Plato's philosophical ideas laid the groundwork for early Christian theology and influenced today's theological concepts. Though never exposed to Christianity, Plato left behind a legacy in metaphysics, ethics, and the nature of the soul that early church fathers, such as Augustine and Origen, adapted into the Christian tradition. To truly appreciate the depth of Plato's impact on Christian thought, it is essential to immerse yourself in vital Platonic dialogues. We will examine the Republic, Phaedo, Symposium, and Timaeus to understand how Plato's forms, his views on the soul, and his ethical philosophy shaped Christian beliefs about heaven, the afterlife, and virtue. These dialogues hold significant insights that Christian theologians later integrated into their theological frameworks. For example, the notion of the forms profoundly influenced Christian ideas about the divine realm. Plato's views on the soul's immortality closely mirror Christian teachings on eternal life. I encourage you to read or revisit these primary texts alongside works from Christian thinkers who Plato directly influenced. Augustine's Confessions and Origen's De Principius are critical to understanding how Platonic ideas were repurposed within a Christian context. In Confessions, Augustine openly acknowledges his intellectual debt to Plato, particularly in his understanding of God as the ultimate eternal reality akin to Plato's form of the good. While the lecture will provide an overview, engaging with these original texts will offer you a far richer understanding. Through direct study of both Platonic and early Christian sources, you will gain insight into how Plato's philosophy helped shape the intellectual foundations of Christianity. This influence continues to resonate in theological and philosophical discourse today. Let's now turn to how Plato's ideas were reinterpreted by early Christian thinkers focusing on three key areas, the concept of the forms and its connection to heaven, the immortality of the soul, and platonic ethics as a precursor to Christian morality. Lecture 28, Plato's Impact on Christian Theology. Today, we will explore how Plato's ideas influenced early Christian theology and continue to shape philosophical interpretations of Christianity. Plato, as a philosopher, did not live to see the rise of Christianity. Still, his ideas, particularly those related to metaphysics, ethics, and the nature of the soul, profoundly affected Christian thinkers from the first centuries of the Common Era. The connection between Plato and Christian theology is one of intellectual inheritance, where the early church fathers and theologians adapted Platonic thought to fit within a Christian worldview. By the end of this lecture, we will examine three significant ways that Plato's ideas left their mark on Christian theology. First, through his notion of the forms and its connection to Christian views of heaven and the divine. Second, the influence of his ideas about the soul and the afterlife. And finally, his ethical philosophy as it relates to Christian morality. I will reference Platonic dialogues to provide concrete examples of these connections. The Platonic forms and the Christian idea of heaven would become central to early Christian conceptions of heaven. One of the most profound ways Plato influenced Christian theology is through his theory of the forms. Plato's forms are perfect, unchanging ideals that exist in a realm beyond the physical world. The physical world, in contrast, is a shadow of these ideals. The material world is seen as transient and inferior to the higher, perfect realm in this dualistic worldview. In the Republic, Plato describes the world of forms using the cave allegory. The cave is a metaphor for the material world, where people are chained and can only see shadows of natural objects cast by the sun's light. In this allegory, the sun represents the form of the good, the highest and most important of all forms. Rep 514a, 520a. For Christians, this idea found resonance with the belief in a perfect heaven where God resides. Just as the form of the good is the source of all truth and knowledge for Plato, so is God in Christian thought. The early Christian theologian, Augustine of Hippo, is perhaps the most famous figure to bring Platonic ideas into Christian theology. Augustine read Plato and found in his philosophy a framework that could be adapted to Christianity. In his work, Confessions, Augustine discusses the existence of a perfect, unchanging God 
and the imperfection of the material world. He explicitly acknowledges the debt he owes to Plato when he writes, I read those books of the Platonists, and therein found it said, in various ways and by many arguments, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Confessions 7, 9, 13. Augustine saw in Plato's forms a model for understanding the Christian God in heaven. Where Plato had the form of the good, Augustine substituted God, arguing that God was the ultimate reality, eternal and unchanging. In the Platonic dialogue, Phaedo, Plato presents the soul's journey after death, which closely mirrors Christian views of heaven and hell. Socrates argues that the soul, which is immortal, is imprisoned in the body during life and is liberated upon death, returning to the realm of the forms, Phaedo 67d, 69e. This view of the soul's ultimate destination had a profound impact on Christian theology, shaping the idea of the soul's salvation and its return to God after death. Plato and the immortality of the soul, closely related to the influence of Platonic metaphysics on Christian theology, is the impact of Plato's ideas about the soul. In dialogues like the Phaedrus, Phaedo, and Republic, Plato presents the soul as an immortal entity distinct from the body. He argued that the soul pre-existed its embodiment in the physical world and that it would continue to exist after death, returning to the realm of forms. In Phaedo, Plato details the argument for the soul's immortality by proposing several arguments, including the argument from recollection. According to Plato, we are able to recognize truths and knowledge, such as geometric concepts, because the soul had previously encountered these truths in the realm of the forms before birth, Phaedo 72, 77a. This notion of the pre-existence and immortality of the soul was a key concept adopted by early Christian theologians, who found in it a useful framework for understanding Christian teachings on the afterlife. One of the clearest examples of this is the Christian doctrine of the resurrection of the soul. In the New Testament, Jesus speaks frequently of the soul's eternal life, and early church fathers like Origen elaborated on this teaching by integrating Platonic ideas. Origen, in his work De Principius, argues for the soul's pre-existence, drawing directly on Plato's teachings in the Phaedrus, Phaedrus 245c, 257b. Like Plato, Origen viewed the soul as fundamentally different from the body and argued that the body's impermanence contrasted with the eternal nature of the soul. Although later Christian thinkers would move away from Origen's views on pre-existence, the core Platonic idea of the soul's immortality continued to influence Christian theology. The Christian belief in eternal life after death, in which the soul is either saved and united with God or condemned, mirrors the Platonic idea of the soul's return to the forms after death. Plato's influence can also be seen in the concept of dualism in Christian thought. In the Republic, Plato compares the soul to a charioteer controlling two horses, one representing the rational part of the soul and the other representing the appetitive, irrational part. Reprinter 439 d 441c. This division of the soul into higher and lower parts is echoed in the Christian view of the human condition, where the body is often seen as a source of sin and temptation, and the soul is considered the seat of reason and morality. Paul's epistles in the New Testament discuss this tension between the flesh and the spirit, a reflection of the Platonic dualism between body and soul, Romans 7, 21, 25, Plato's ethics and Christian morality. In addition to influencing Christian metaphysics and theology, Plato's ethical philosophy had a profound impact on Christian morality. Plato's ethics, as presented in dialogues like the Republic and the Symposium, focus on the cultivation of virtues and the pursuit of the good. For Plato, the highest goal of human life is to live in accordance with the form of the good, which requires developing the cardinal virtues, wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. In the Republic, Plato argues that the just individual is one who has harmonized these virtues within themselves, aligning the rational part of the soul with the desires of the spirited and appetitive parts. Rep. 441d 444b. This vision of a well-ordered soul became the foundation for Christian teachings on virtue and moral living. Early Christian thinkers like Ambrose and Augustine drew on Plato's philosophy 
to develop a Christian ethic that emphasized the importance of cultivating virtues in order to live a good life. For example, Ambrose's work, De Officis Ministrorum, on the duties of the clergy, borrows heavily from Plato's teachings on virtue and the idea that a person's soul must be properly ordered to achieve moral excellence. Augustine, in City of God, also discusses the importance of virtue in the Christian life, arguing that true happiness comes from aligning oneself with God's will, a position that echoes Plato's teaching that the ultimate goal of human life is to align oneself with the form of the good. Plato's influence on Christian ethics can also be seen in the concept of agape, or selfless love, which became central to Christian morality. In the Symposium, Plato presents the idea of eros as a desire for the good, which begins with physical attraction, but ultimately leads to the love of wisdom and the form of the good itself. Semper 210a, 212a. Early Christian thinkers transformed this Platonic concept into the idea of agape, a selfless love that reflects God's love for humanity. Just as Plato's eros is a desire for the eternal and unchanging, Christian agape is a love that transcends the physical world and seeks the divine. The Platonic emphasis on the cultivation of virtues, the pursuit of the good, and the importance of selfless love became cornerstones of Christian morality. In this way, Plato's ethical philosophy laid the groundwork for Christian teachings on how to live a moral life in accordance with God's will. Conclusion In conclusion, Plato's influence on early Christian theology and philosophy is undeniable. His ideas about the forms, the immortality of the soul, and the cultivation of virtue provided a rich intellectual framework that early Christian thinkers adapted to their own theological concerns. The influence of Platonic thought can be seen in the Christian concepts of heaven, the soul's eternal life, and the moral virtues that guide human behavior. While Christianity ultimately developed its own distinct theological and philosophical system, the debt it owes to Plato remains profound. By exploring these connections, we can better understand how the Platonic tradition helped shape the intellectual foundations of Western Christian thought and continues to influence philosophical discussions on the nature of God, the soul, and the good. With this understanding, students can appreciate not only the historical relationship between Platonic and Christian thought, but also how these ancient ideas continue to resonate in modern discussions of theology and ethics.